ball, finds the hole up the middle. Steps up, goes deep, left side, receiver, open, counting, touchdown, Titans! Takes a nice shot outside the goal box, and he will break the 0-0 tie. Fantastic shot by Ken Lop Solon. Giller makes a move, a good one, opportunity here, the Bears score! The Bears strike first. He's at the 40, he's down to the 30, the 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Jalen. Brian, why not? What a beautiful run. Maureen there, fights her off the puck. Opportunity here, another sit, and a goal! Second chance effort for the Pioneers. Put the icing on the cake, if you will, Michael. Didn't go down and got to the outside and said good evening and good night. Hello and welcome to this presentation of TV19 Sports. We are here at George Smith Field on the campus of Matamidi High School as the Matamidi Zephyrs play host to the Hill Murray Pioneers. And folks, as you can see at the bottom of your screen, it is Team Emmy Day. And that, of course, is referring to Emmy, one of a, a youngster here in the community that was recently diagnosed with a brain tumor. Uh, she has since had a successful surgery and is now back living at home in full recover, uh, recovery. The Matamidi lacrosse team has dedicated their entire season to raise awareness about brain cancer research and to support Emmy in her battle. And the entire day has been called Team Emmy Day in the community. So we want you to hashtag Team Emmy on all social media to join the cause and support brain cancer research. And there you go, you take a look at our matchup there. Kind of two teams going different ways. You see Matamidi 8 0 and Hill Murray 2 6. I am Sam Erickson alongside my new friend here, John Miller, joining us for his first broadcast in the booth. How the heck are you doing, John? Happy I'm, to have you here. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Really excited. First time on. All right. You see there, we're going to take right. a look at the weather. You see a little propeller. All right. The overcast today, we got uh, northwest winds at 14 miles an hour. The windmill here at the stadium is blowing. And the temperature is 60 degrees with overcast skies, but let's play some lacrosse. That's right. Hopefully things will stay around 60, but I think it might cool down a little bit as the sun goes down, although it wasn't out much today. And then there's a look at the Metro East standings. This is a Metro East matchup. Yep, we got Matamidi at 3-0 in the, in the Metro East Conference and Hill Murray at 1-3. Matamidi 8-0 overall, or 8 no overall. A number two in the state right behind Edina and Hill Murray 1-3. As you can see, they're not having too great of a season so far, but they'll try to bounce back on track today. That's right, and so we'll take a closer look at the matchup and the two different teams and how they're doing. You said they're kind of going two different ways Yeah, this Hill year? Murray's on a five-game losing streak. They lost to Tartan 18-0 on May 3rd. They're actually being outscored their last five games during this five-game losing streak, 69 to 16. And then we have Matamidi. They're looking forward to the state tournament. As I said earlier, they're number two in the state. And they beat North 23-0 on May 5th. And they have seven players with over 10, 10 points. And they have the leading scorer in the state with 54 points of Mitchell Schwartz. All right. Well, that looks to be our matchup. We will have the uh, the opening draw for you when we return. Of course, it is Team Emmy Day, all in support of Emmy. We will have that opening draw for you when we return. Stay with us. Hello and welcome back as we await the start of the game as Matamidi plays host to Hill Murray here in Boys Lacrosse. And we want to remind you that it is hashtag Team Emmy Day here at the stadium. Of course, uh, in honor of Emmy Venus, a youngster from the Matamidi community who was diagnosed with a brain tumor and went, uh, went through a lengthy surgery and is now cancer free. Everything is good. And uh, the Matamidi Lacrosse team has dedicated their season to Emmy. Yep, everybody out here wearing their Team Emmy shirts. Great cause, great community. That's right, you can kind of see the blue t-shirts there under the yellow jerseys for Matamidi. 
They all do have a hashtag Team Emmy. We want you to participate on social media uh, with that hashtag Team Emmy Day. And great cause, and hopefully it should be a great game. Yeah, we got. When you take a look there. There is Emmy. Very cute little girl. That is looking healthy, albeit shy. That's what we like to see. Yeah. Can understand with all the attention that uh, she's been getting, but one happy camper and glad to see, see that she is healthy and uh, here tonight. It's always good to see a community rally around a cause. Definitely, definitely. All right, well, we said in our pregame, kind of two teams going different ways so far this season. Miami Night 8 and 0, ranked second in state. Hill Murray kind of sputtering along here at the start, uh, but you never know with uh, a conference game how things might shake out. Yep, Matamidi, they can't overestimate or underestimate uh, Hill Murray here today. Interconference games are always close. They rise to the occasion. Matamidi now in their second year under coach Moosebrugger, uh, a guy who came from the college ranks, actually was the, uh, the head coach at St. Thomas. And uh, in his two years here, well, I suppose he's a year and a half into his second year here. He's really done a lot of great things. Montemino was actually consolation champions in the state tournament last year and are looking real strong again this year. Yeah, he said he won a couple of championships with St. Thomas. Seems to be a really good coach. That's right. Kind of struggled a little bit at the early going of last year, he said, but uh, once the kids kind of understood the system, kind of bought into it, and uh, they had a few injuries in the early going, once they got healthy, things really clicked, and they had a strong uh, second half of the year and uh, obviously a great start to this season, including a win over uh, last year's state champion, White Bear Lake. So not too much going on here in the early going. We got a stoppage, but we'll start up again. Yeah, nice defense in there from the Pioneers. Got a couple players to watch here on the Matamidi side. A couple guys doing a lot of scoring for the Zephyr squad. Yeah, we got Connor Lawless, who's got 30 goals on the year and five assists for a total of 35 points. But they have the leading point scorer in the state with Matt, uh, Matt Schwartz. He's got 22 goals and 32 assists. And he's first in points, uh, first in assists, and 19th in the state for goals. And Lawless is fifth in the state for goals with 30. If you do the math, math folks, that is a pretty in, insane uh, scoring average per game. I believe Matamida has only played eight, and uh, you know he's upwards of 50 points already. So that is that is an impressive scoring record, and uh, no wonder he's being recognized as one of the top players in the Metro. Yep, Coach Moosberger said these guys put in the hard work and the time in the off season, and that's why their team is where they're at today. So far, is zero zero. Having some issues with our clock here tonight, so I'll have to update you on time uh, for the time being. And uh, no score as well. Here is we're just about a minute into this one, minute and a half. Good save by the goalie there. Yeah, Mind me, I just kind of working it around in the Hill Murray zone. Schwartz there with it now. One of our players to watch on the Zephyrs, 42, cradles it. Looking for an angle, dishes it over. Jared Johnson, number 22 with it. He goes inside, a shot, and a goal. And that is some nice one-touch passing. Jared Johnson hooked up Ethan Grover, and uh, Johnson should be used to doing some passing. Blees play, plays quarterback for the Zephyr squad in the fall, but he gets an assist here early, and Matamidi with a quick one-to-nothing lead. As you see, number Number nine with the goal. Nice job, Johnson finding Grover right out front. And uh, not much the goalie could do about that one. And we'll have another draw after the goal. So 9.49 left to go here, first quarter. One to nothing, Matamidi. So a strong start. And Devin Fitzpatrick, he shoots it up to Grover. Grover will bring it into the Hill Murray zone and throw it into a corner. And that will just get away from Ben Putney. As Matt Schwartz with an errant pass, probably something you don't hear too often. No, normally he's making all the assists. 32 on the year. Just a little miscommunication uh, with his teammate there. 
just out of the reach, goes out of bounds, and Hill Murray now with it, as you see. Hill Murray looks like they came out to play today. Hill Murray substitution Battle in the corner. And we have a hold. Ball will go the other way. Matamidi hold was against Hill Murray. And Matamidi will bring it up across midfield once again. The ball is with Cole Selman, number one. And he'll drop it back as they try and set up their offense. Schwartz down to Lawless. Lawless with it behind the net. He dishes it back out to Schwartz. Schwartz whips it, goes wide right. In fact, it took a deflection, and Hill Murray will go the other way. This was caught out of midair by Andrew Seifert. Schwartz with a nice steal right there. Yeah, getting it back. Nice job on the recovery. Schwartz with it at the top. Gives it to Ben Putney. Selman with it now. Takes some contact going in. No call. And I think he goes all the way and in, and he does. And that'll be the Zephyr's second goal here in the early going. Yeah, you saw Selman had about two or three players around there, and he just said, I'm going to do it myself, and he throws it right in the net. Take a look at that replay. Oh, a lot of contact. Oh, see that. Four players around him. He says, I want to take it myself, and he gets it right in there. Great goal by Simon. Yeah, sneaks it past the defender. You see that a lot in the cross. They do the bounce shot. Very difficult to defend. The goalies uh, kind of keep the nets up at their face, so it's hard for them to you know bring it down to the ground that fast. And that's why you see a lot of shots low here in the cross. In fact, bouncing sort of right in front of the goalkeeper. There's really not much the goalie can do about that. Pioneers will win the draw. And try and bring it ahead. That's Cor uh, Connor Varley, excuse me. He'll drop it. In the far corner, 27 cradling it now. That is Nicholas Visic, the uh, coach's son, head coach of the Hill Murray Pioneers. Greg Visic. Yep, he's also the leading scorer on the team with 13 goals. He's having a good year so far. One of the few bright spots for Hill Murray's season this year. That's right, the only player for the uh, Pioneers in double digits in terms of goals. So Lawless with it behind, he's 32. Lawless and Schwartz, there's 42. Schwartz with it now. They're kind of the two players to watch on the Zephyr squad, 32 and 42. Yeah, Schwartz is always a dangerous player with the ball as we've seen with the 30 goals this year. Ball behind the net. Schwartz looking to make a move. He'll throw it towards the net. And it'll just go over. Hard but throw, just a little errant. Matamidi first to it. And the ball sails out of bounds behind the net. Team closest to the ball going out of bounds actually gets it. A little different from most sports where, uh, you know, if you throw it out or if it goes off of you, the other team gets it. It's whoever's closest. So you see there Matamidi throwing it out of bounds, but uh, getting the ball back because their players were closest to it when it went out of bounds. And there is another goal as 42, Matt Schwartz adds to his tally on the year. Schwartz just bringing it behind the net, a little 360, and he throws it hard right, right past the goalie. That was a great goal by Schwartz. Watch right here, great spin move. Runs around, chucks it in right past the goalie There's on the no goalie's right hand that. side. That's why he's one of the best goal scorers in the state. Thought for a second, uh, referees were kind of having a little discussion there. Wasn't sure if they were calling that good, but it is. And Matamina leads three to nothing. 6.41 left to go, quarter number one. Yeah, Hill Murray's got to step it up. Matamina is already putting the pressure on early. You can really see where uh, Coach Moosebrugger's kind of building a dynasty here at Matamina. I believe they reached the state tournament in 2014 as well, a year before Moose Brugger took over. Hill Murray looking to get on the board, shot fired in. Great defense there by Jacob Broadhaus. Nice block. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Miami will take it the other way now. That's Ethan Grover, I believe, nine. He's been all over the field on the early going. He passed it off. Number 20 with it now. That is Joey Rohrer. Nope, shorts with the ball. He's always dangerous with it in his hands. See 42 cradling it. He drops it down to his buddy there, Connor Lawless. Lawless looking to make a move, tries to scoop it. Looks like he just shot that one a little early, just to the left-hand side of the goalie. Sails wide, but Montemini closest to it. They'll take it again. And they are in uh, dangerous territory, as we've got about five and a half minutes now left go to go here in quarter number one. Nice pass from behind the net. We found Ethan Grover streaking. As you said, he's been all over the field. Yep. At that time, he's just cutting towards the uh, front of the net, and they hook him up. Yep, Joey Rohr with the easy pass to Ethan Grover. Just a simple put me in. This modern Midi team is looking very good. Looking as good as advertised here in the early going. I think we have a timeout. Looks like Hill Murray's going to take one. They're down 4 to nothing now with five and a half left to go in the opening uh, quarter. Let's take another look at that goal. Yeah, as you see, you can see Jacob Rohr. Just a simple pass. Looks like that wasn't the goal. It was actually a shot before. It's kind of what set up the goal. Connor Lawless with a, a rare miss. Man with 30 goals on the year. Now this is Jacob Rohr. With the easy, easy pass to Rover. And he just throws it right in. To Grover. They make it look easy. That's why they're number two in the state. That is right. As we were talking to their coach earlier, he felt that they should be number one. He wasn't too happy with the rankings today. That's right. I believe they were number two. Didn't lose a game. Somehow Edina jumps them and is number one. Edina was uh, three or four before the, the uh, last week. most recent standings. So you got to wonder about some of that West Metro bias. Hey, TV19 sports fans, want to remind you to like us on Facebook as well as follow us on Twitter. Of course, you can always hashtag TV19 sports. You can find us on Facebook at our TV19 sports Facebook page. And uh, you can comment and uh, share some social media activity on Twitter with the hashtag TV19 sports as well as hashtag Team Emmy Day, which is going on today. If you follow us on Facebook, you find links to a lot of our old broadcasts as well as old episodes of Sports Path. It's a nice sports highlight show we like to do here on TV19 Sports. So I uh, want to encourage everyone to get involved. And it looks like we're ready to go once again. Let's see if the, uh, Hill Murray can get something going here on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, Hill Murray taking the timeout. And uh, to see if that works here, they'll get on the board. Ooh, nice look there as 17 streaking towards the net. Connor Varley. Hill Murray will stay with it. What a goal there! Pass was behind Andrew Seifert, but he makes a move. 360 flings it towards the net, and it sneaks in. So Hill Murray gets on the board, and that is a dandy. It is four to one now. It's just what Hill Murray needed. Get themselves right back into the game. Let's see if they can uh, capitalize off this momentum. That's, I guess a smart time out there by Coach Visage. Trying to even get that one queued up again. Yeah, sometimes you need a timeout just to regroup. So here's a look at that goal. Eventually you'll see a pass in to Seifert. Gets a little bit away from him, but he'll make a move. That was a little bit before, a missed opportunity. Here comes the pass into Seifert. Behind him does a little twirl and fires at home. Very impressive. Hey, Gunsling, that one in there that was a great shot. All right, back to live action. Nice save from the Matamidi goalie. Matamidi putting pressure already on the Hill Murray defense. Oh, nice save there by the goalie, yeah, Ibarra. Yeah, Felipe Ibarra Suggs with a nice stop. And we had another nice stop on the other end by Matamidi just before that. You know, that is uh, goalkeeper Evan Stoker. We're talking a lot about the Metro leaders in scoring on this uh, Matamidi squad, but another you know, Stoker and Ned is actually up there in the tops for wins as a goal goalie with eight eight wins. Yeah, he actually has 105 shots on goal, but he's only allowed 37 goals with a 64% save rate. That's pretty good. Yeah, for lacrosse, that is darn good. 
but it also helps when Hill Murray has a great defense, or not, Matamidi has a great defense as well. That's right, playing good defense in front of net, and uh, takes a little bit of pressure off him when you got Lawless and Schwartz, you know, scoring at will on the other end. You know, those two seem to be a great tandem. All right, a stoppage, we'll start it again. Hill Murray working it around in the Matamidi zone. Pass goes back up top. Behind the net with Lucas Wallen. He'll throw it in front. A good D by the Zephyrs. They chase it down and they will take it. Stoker with it now. Not really sure what to do. And looking for a teammate to come to him, and one does in Matt Schwartz, number 42, and he's ready to go up and do things on the offensive side. He'll find Lawless in the middle, and he'll score. It's the other way around. Normally it's Lawless to Schwartz. This time we've got Schwartz to Wallace. What a great pass and a great throw. You can tell why these guys score so much. I mean, just great vision and a good IQ for the game. He kind of was patient there and eventually found Lawless. Lawless is doing a good job as uh, Hillbury was kind of watching Schwartz there in the corner, just kind of sneaking in behind him and throwing it through. They made that look too easy. They are well coached, you can tell. Coach uh, Mooseberger also kind of told us that not a lot has changed in terms of personnel, in terms of players from last year. The guys kind of came into this year buying into the system, really wanted to work hard in the offseason and, you know, do something big this year. Uh, they said, you know, especially Schwartz and Lawless as well, you know, coming in, kind of setting that, uh, you know, setting the the bar for the rest of the team, you know, with that leadership of, you know, the hard work and wanting to make something of this year. Yeah, he was saying that Schwartz put a lot of time in during the summer. Same with Lawless, but he thinks Schwartz is the best player in the state overall, and his numbers back that up. I was going to say, it has the numbers to prove it. And, uh, you know, we mentioned Montemino undefeated on the year. Have some big wins. Uh, one against last year's state tournament champion, White Bear Lake. Uh, you know, White Bear is looking a little down from last year, but impressive win nonetheless. As well as getting by Benilde St. Margaret. You know, always a good team there. All right, so the score is 5-1. to one. Montemino leading with the ball. 243 and counting left to go first quarter. That shot goes a little high. Yeah, Selman just airmailed that one a little bit. But the Zephyrs will stay with it. Schwartz makes a move, fires low. Ibarra Suggs there to stop it. Goalie didn't even see look, didn't even look like he saw that ball. It just hit him right in the leg and bounced off. I feel like in lacrosse sometimes uh, that's how goalies get their saves. A little bit of luck. A little yeah. luck of the bounce, right? All they have, you know, they don't have the big pads like a hockey goalie. They just have their legs. Stop it any way you can, right? That's right. That's that countdown to about two minutes left to go. The first quarter, and I think we just had another goal. Grover with another goal. I'm not sure what happened there. I looked away for a split As second. As you can see, Selman with a nice pass to Grover. Just a simple throw right in the top hand of the goal. Kind of reminiscent of how they first got on the board. Quick Seven pass to Grover, one, uh, one touch shot. And that makes it six to one, Matamidi. You can really see with the Zephyr team, they kind of have a bit of an edge in terms of uh, the lacrosse experience, I would say. You know, they look a little more familiar with this game. Some of the Hill Murray guys might be a little new to the sport. Yeah, as Matamidi's coach was saying, they got a lot of guys coming back from last year. But the more it's more just a system thing. They bought into it, and they're having a great year. It was interesting uh, to talk to Coach as well about how many multi-sport athletes they have on this team, as well as what sports, you know, the wide range of sports that these athletes come from, you know, football. You know, a lot of times you think hockey, but not, not exclusively hockey players doing uh, the lacrosse. Yeah, you got Fitzpatrick from Matamita. He's actually going to St. Cloud for wrestling. So these guys aren't just lacrosse players. They're athletes. They play football, wrestling. Uh, pretty good. And they're pretty decent lacrosse athletes as well as Joey Rohrer with a nice shot. And that one goes in. That'll be 7-1. to one. And we are not done with the first quarter here. 
Seven to one after the first quarter. Hill Murray needs to step it up in order to get back into the game. They did take a timeout earlier and coming out of that timeout scored a goal. Maybe they should take another one. We'll see, see what happens here. But uh, like most teams that have been facing Matamidi this season, might be a long night. You saw they took down uh, fellow Metro East Conference foes, North St. Paul, 23-0. Yep, coming off a 12-10 win against Holy Angels on the uh, sixth. It was a pretty close game. And as their coach was saying, sometimes they, they look over opponents a little bit and they can't do that. There oh, nice go. move to Deke, the goalie. Lawless with another goal. Normally he's dishing him out, but he also scores. I mean, you just see the way this Modern United team passes yeah, the ball. Running. They are just very accurate. It's effortless. And it looks like we will have a timeout. So eight to one, Modern United leading. 123 left to go first quarter. We take a timeout. Hill Murray wanting to talk some things over. Yeah, they need to regroup. They need to get. We're going to take another look at that goal from Lawless just a moment ago. You see a simple pass right over the middle. From Schwartz to Lawless again. Lawless just throws it in there. And there is just nothing the goalie can do about that. It really looks like Schwartz and Lawless are switching places today. Maybe something the uh, coach wanted him to work on. Yeah, dish it out a little more. All right, TV19 sports fans, we also want to remind you that we cannot put on these broadcasts without the wonderful work of our volunteers. If you have any interest in uh, working behind the scenes, running camera, doing instant replay, anything like that, feel free to contact Arlen Becker at the contact info you see on the screen. All of our volunteers do a great job. Couldn't do it without them. Some of the nicest people you ever meet. That's right. Bring, uh, we bring a lot of treats, candy, and pop to the game. So always have a great time, and we could always use more help. How can you deny free candy at time? Oh, yeah, that's right. Can't do it. So it keeps bringing me back. So it looks like Hill Murray still discussing a few things. Matamidi ready to take the field. Yeah, Hill Murray really needs to regroup. Matamidi takes three seconds to group up, and then they're out of the huddle. They sound amped up coming out of that huddle, so let's see what they got. Hill Murray. I'm impressed with the depth of this uh, Modern United team as well. It looks like a lot of players can kind of just step in there and, you know, they wouldn't lose a whole lot. A lot of solid, solid lacrosse players out there, and I think that's a testament to the coach and coaching staff. Definitely. As we can see, they, we've seen a lot of players run out here today, and they're all making it look like nobody else is changing out. One of the things Coach had mentioned was that uh, it took – the, the team a little while to get up to the speed that he wanted them to play at. And it certainly looks like they're flying now. I mean, you see those passes, one-touch shots. You know, uh, like you've been saying, it almost looks effortless out there. Yep. Just over a minute left to go first quarter, excuse me. Eight to one is our score. Apologies again about our clock. Do not have our clock working right now, so I'll have to update you on time. As I said, we're under a minute here in the first quarter. As you can see, Matamidi plays such good defense that Hill Murray just has trouble getting a pass to each other. You can really see them condensed in front of net. I mean, it's, it's very difficult for Hill Murray to even get a look. Kind of makes it easy when you're a goalie. you got a great defense standing in front of you. Exactly. They almost create a wall. Careless turnover, though, by Matamidi in their own zone. Good nice. defense, but we'll have a flag. Uh, that's yeah, a great I thought they might get him on that one. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like We'll have a push. We'll take a look at that interception again. As you can see again. Seifert jumping up there, grabbing the pass. Great steal by Seifert there. Yeah, Seifert, one of the uh, one of the top players on this Hill Murray squad. Four goals and one assist. Has the lone goal for the Pioneers here tonight. Impressive shot. Kick and handle the net a little bit. As you saw there jumping up to get that interception, and then his goal was very impressive. Kind of a 360 and just whipped it in on net. There's nothing that... Stoker could do about it. Yeah, let's see if they can get Seifert and Vishic going a little bit to get something going on offense. The ball stay with Hill Murray. Lucas Wallen with it now, number three. Yeah, Varley with a missed shot right there. Right, give 
And that will do it for our first quarter. Big one for the Modern United Zephyrs, number two in the state. They lead it eight to one. We'll break briefly and we will have the second quarter for you when we return. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to George Smith Field here at Montemedi. And you take a look, and the score there is actually incorrect. Uh, it was eight to one at the end of the first. Montemedi looking very impressive, and there it is, switched over for the start of the second. Montemedi leading eight to one. And nice job by our great technical crew keeping up with that one. So Montemedi looking like the strong team that they are. Montemini scoring so fast, making it hard on our technical crew. Of course, I jest, always do a great job. A draw to start and have a quick stop. Yep, Hill Murray's trying to make sure they don't lose 18 or nothing like they did against Tartan. So they're going to try to regroup here and score some goals in the second quarter before going into half. Well, I'll tell you, they've already done one better than that game. Very true. They did get on the board. Looks like they need to get the ball to Visage a little more. Leading goal scorer, and he's barely had the ball. He's just been sitting on the left side of the field, picked up a couple out-of-bounds balls, but they need to get him something. Not sure what the uh, issue is here. I think they maybe had an illegal, some illegal draw. Referees are discussing. And now we're ready. As looks like Connor Varley will take over. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they were uh, confused about switching sides on the faceoff. Maybe they did. Teams did switch ends of the field to start the second. And I think one of the issues was that the player taking the draw for Montemita was going to sub off right away. And that has happened. Uh, Hill Murray turned it over immediately. They did not need that right there. They needed to get the ball. They needed to get some shots on the goal. Ball on the far side. Schwartz down to Lawless. Lawless with it behind the net. Every time he's got the ball in his hands or in a stick, he really looks like he's going to score today. Doesn't look like he's going for very many assists. You know, it's interesting. You know, I kind of mentioned that Modern Media looks so condensed when they're on defense. You notice how the Modern Media offense pulls the Hill Murray defense out, and they really are much more expanded out, allowing for those players to kind of cut into the middle and get those easy goals. Yep, they make it look effortless, mostly, and then they throw it over the middle for easy goals. We kind of see, hopefully, here when Hill Murray comes in the zone, how this modern Midnight defense sort of condenses down and clogs things up in the middle. You see that. Look at almost all shoulder to shoulder in there. That was a nice little spin move by Laramie, and then he got tripped up. I see some different players out here now for the Zephyrs. Wyman having a little trouble with the ball, and then he gets knocked down. That was tough. Player subbing on for Hill Murray just came in and decked him. That was a Take a look hit. at the save. Ibarra Suggs touching it just wide. Good wherewithal to know where it was after he poked it away. Uh, careless turnover by Pioneers. And 
Mott will look to go the other way quickly. Wallace looking to dish to Schwartz. Or he'll take it himself. And not sure if that hit a player or if that was a save. A uh, hard shot on goal and hit the post. Hit the post to Fleck wide. And Schwartz picks it up. He'll dish it down right in front of the net. And Hill Murray will take the loose ball. Go the other way, but big check from 42, Connor Lawless. Excuse me, 42, Matt Schwartz. Yeah, Schwartz didn't look like he was too happy with that last turnover. Look like he took down the Hill Murray player. And we'll have a penalty. Take a look at another replay. And maybe had a shove in the back there. Push, it was a push. So they'll have a guy off the field for one minute, a little unsportsmanlike conduct like right there. And I'm not sure if, uh, looks like they might have two players down in the box. One got the unsportsmanlike conduct, one got the uh, the push. Now Hill Murray needs to take advantage of two guys out. As you see, yeah, 32 Lawless down there as well as number one, Cole Selman. Taking a knee kind of in the uh, penalty penalty area, penalty box area. Although not much of a box out here in outdoor lacrosse. Varley shoots, but nice stick in the way as the Zephyrs defend. Great job by Fitzpatrick right there. There you Another go, Visage with the shot. Needs to take some more. Quinn Lemke giving up the body on that last shot. Just kind of stood in the way. Definitely a game not for the faint of heart. Take a lot of knocks. Very physical game. The ball also does not feel good. Let me tell you, it does not feel good when that thing gets slung at you and it hits you dead on. Not a whole lot of padding in the guys' lacrosse game either. I leave a mark like a paintball, paintball gun. Absolutely. Nice uh, boy, that was an opportunity for the Pioneers. Squandered with a careless pass. Nope. Yep. Two guys back in. So Mott has it on offense. 22 now just in. Jared Johnson. I believe Johnson had, his, had the assist on the first goal we saw. Oh, Lawless taking it himself right there. Just couldn't get sneak it past the goalie. Nice save by Ibarra Suggs. I think he got a leg on that one. Yeah, he did. Nice play. Playing it back to Ibarra Suggs. He's going to launch it up. Try and go long. Almost finds a teammate. Kind of a scrum for it. Oof. And a big hit in. Nice hit there by Tyler Chapolsky. Just mentioning how physical this game can be. There's a good look at it. And after a long battle, Matamidi will pick it up. There's Fitzpatrick, loses it. Nice check by the Pioneer defense. After not seeing very many checks in the first quarter, these two came out a little scrappy. Gotta wonder if uh, Hill Murray, Coach Visage had uh, some words for his team, which included be a little more physical. Yeah, maybe be a little more aggressive, get inside Matamidi's heads, maybe disrupt them a little bit. Well, they've held him off the scoreboard for almost five minutes here in the second quarter, so job accomplished here. Yeah, Bar Suggs has had some great goals after some few hiccups in the first quarter. He's kind of bounced back. They try and get it up through the middle. And eventually he's picked by the Pioneers. But turned Ilgen. over once again. Ilgen head and he fell down, just slipped right out of his stick. And that'll trickle through and be a goal. Schwartz with another easy goal there. Player of his caliber, if he's you know if he's going to have space that close to the net, there is there is pretty much only one outcome, and that's going to be another goal. As you can see, Matamita had an easy pass to Schwartz, just. 
throws it in there right out the goalie's leg. You see there are only three defenders in the area for Hill Murray, you know, all having to be spread out. Schwartz is actually going to the Air Force to play hockey next, or lacrosse next year. So good for him. Thank you for his future service. That's right. Always love that. And uh, congratulations, too. No easy task. Believe scholarship, or is he just going? I mean, you know what, the coach really didn't say. But the way he plays, I'd be surprised if it wasn't a scholarship. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And then we know Quinn Lemke is also going to Cleveland State uh, on a full ride scholarship to play lacrosse, so good for him. All right, I know a lot of uh, sport is growing here in the Midwest. Often, uh, for a long time, has a history of being an East Coast sport, kind of dominant. Yeah, as you see the NCAA, Maryland, Duke. Blowing up in the middle of That's right, and I think a lot of uh, you know some of those schools are starting to pay attention to some of these players. And uh, a guy like Lemke going out to Cleveland now, that's not super far east, but uh, you know it's it's working that way. You got to wonder how easy the transition is from hockey to lacrosse, and these guys just make it look so effortless that it could be a translation there. Yeah, and I really think you know, especially here in the state of Minnesota, with hockey being such a big sport, the lacrosse is you know kind of going to follow suit, and I think will really gain in popularity. Now yeah, we did mention that Montevideo like, draws a lot of players from all sorts of sports, but hockey is often a transition. It's good cross training for hockey. A lot of players like it. Oh yeah, as you know, a lot of players play hockey year round and some of them now are playing lacrosse just to stay with their cardiovascular and stuff like that. I do like that, you know, for a while kind of the, the notion is to stick with one sport and sort of, you know, only play that sport, get as good as you can at the one yeah. sport. But I do like, you know, when some of these youngsters, you know, have fun playing multiple sports. You know, th there are things you can learn and will benefit you in, you know, the sport that you maybe focus most on, but you can kind of pick things up by just playing other sports, other games. Yeah, you hear a lot of coaches talk about that on ESPN, that today players need to play more than just one sport so they can get better at different assets, such as vision, uh, passing, things like that. Absolutely. I mean, you can understand at a level, you know, maybe professionally where it really takes a lot of dedication to get to that top top level where you might need to focus only on one sport but you know a lot of these big uh, you know sports stars you know they could excel in a lot of different sports and in fact did at you know the high school level yeah just because you like one sport more doesn't mean you're not better at a different one you know uh, locally joe mauer is a big pioneer for kind of a multi-sport approach he was a great football baseball full ride scholarship well, number one ranked basketball. recruit in football to Maurer had a full ride scholarship to Florida State to play quarterback under Jim Bowden, but decided to go with the hometown twins. That's right, yeah. As soon as he was drafted number one overall, I think uh, it may have been an easy choice. Also, uh, baseball a little less physical on you. You got to wonder how good he could have been as a quarterback, though, six foot five. Yeah, really now, too. <laughs> yeah. After seeing the twins, I wonder if he's wondering uh, this year if he should switch over and start chucking balls for the Vikings. Can't carry the team all by himself. <laughs> So 10 to 1 now our score, 425 and counting left to go. Marching right in, Ibarra Suggs does get the net, his net on it, so it doesn't go into the net. Yeah, Chalupski with a hard throw and Ibarra Suggs right there. He's been playing great all. Oh, look at that, Chalupski just throws it hard. Ibarra see, Suggs, just a great block. As I kind of mentioned earlier, you see why they go low a lot of the times, because you see the goalie there holding uh, his stick up at kind of face level. I thought that one, was going to be a sure goal as you know, close as the Montemillo player got to the net, but nice job by Suggs. You got to wonder with the goalie with their helmet on. It's probably hard to see down on the ground. Good it's job by Suggs not uh, cheating and just going low right away, keeping the stick up there and uh, blocking that one. He's having a great second quarter, although he's allowed two goals. It's three minutes left. He had eight in the first half, or in the first quarter. And there's there another save. Jalupski again, throws it hard, Ibarra Suggs right there to block it. I say Suggs not getting a ton of help from his defense. So Hill Murray trying to bring it upfield. They will see for it, looking for it. Can't quite, and nobody can quite scoop it off the turf. But Matamidi eventually will get it, and that is number two. Quinn Lemke, I believe. Excuse me. That is Devin Fitzpatrick, number two. The wrestler. That's right. 
Now that's a, a dual sport wrestling and lacrosse. That that's probably a bit of a rarity. But uh, Fitzpatrick el electing to wrestle at St. Cloud next year, I believe, over yeah, some some look at from the University of Minnesota, which is pretty incredible considering the uh, tradition that they have at the University of Minnesota for wrestling. Yeah, especially you know they have all those great less wrestlers, and then including Brock Lesnar, he's a legend around here. Uh, kind of a NCAA powerhouse year in and year out. So St. Cloud State must be building a pretty good program. That's right. I think I heard uh, Minnesota finished 16th in the NCAA rankings last year in wrestling, which I thought was actually pretty darn low for uh, the Gophers. Yeah, not to their standards. Yeah, they're usually top 10, top 5, no question. What a shot. And a lot of my bench likes that one. That was a great goal by Luke Smith. Running down the field, just throws it right in. Bar Sons couldn't even stop that one. Now you got to wonder, Luke Smith, eight games played, no points. Luke Smith just running down the field. He no defense there. He just throws it in. It was a high one, but it got right past the bar of Suggs. I don't know if you saw on that replay, but the Mottomi uh, bench kind of going nuts on that one. I think it was because Smith getting his first points on the year. And you got to like it. The whole team supporting uh, a, you know, a player. They're all buying in. They're all into it. And it really shows on the field. Yeah, Smith being a senior, getting his first points. What a great feeling for him. I'm sure he's worked very hard to get to where he is just to get on the field. Just over two minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Matamini leading 11 to 1. Visage with it goes low. Behind the net are the Pioneers. Hackman gave off to Lucas Wallen. There's Hackman, number six. He gives the Visage. Visage bounce shot goes wide to the right. To the goalies, right, our left. Yep, like I said earlier, they need to get Visage going. The more shots on goalie he gets, the better chance Hill Murray has of getting back he's in the game. He's starting to get some looks, and he's starting to just fire. That's what he's got to do. That's I think the they're listening to you. I wonder if you heard me from up here. Yeah. <laughs> but the more goals he, the more shots on goal he gets, the more, the better chance Hill Murray has at least a chance to get back in this game. Now Visage with 13 goals in the eight games for Hill Murray, far and away their top goal scorer. Yeah, as you see, their second goal, second leading goal scorer only has six. And you look at Matamidi, their leading goal scorer has 32 or 30, and their second place has 22. So a big difference between Matamidi and Hill Murray. Hill Murray hardly has 30 on the season, just to give you some perspective of what uh, Schwartz and Lawless have been doing. 50 points in eight games. Yeah, I mean. If I was better at math, I could give you some kind of average. That's impressive. Yeah, if you're looking at it, over the last five games, including this one, uh, they're being outscored 80 to 17. So defense kind of needs to step it up for Hill Murray. That's right, and this is a tough conference uh, for boys lacrosse. You saw Tartan, uh, we looked at the standings a little bit earlier. Tartan is actually undefeated on the season as well. Yeah, they're ranked 15th in the state. I was gonna say, I believe not just, yeah, overall 7-0, in conference 3-0, including a, I believe you said 18-0 victory over this Hill Murray team. It'll be an exciting matchup when Tartan and uh, Matamita get together. Yeah, they get together on May 19th. That should be a great game to watch here at Matamita Stadium. And that's half. That is going to be half. That will conclude our second quarter. Modern Man still in control, 11 to 1. Just an all out dominant half by Hill Murray there, or Modern Midi. Great effortless gameplay. Yeah, definitely looking as advertised. So that is going to be it for the first half. We will break and we'll have that second half for you when we return. We'll see y'all on.
a beautiful shot of the water tower here at George Smith Field on the campus of Modern Midi High School. We are here to start the second half. You see the Zephyrs leading 11 to one. A very impressive half by a very impressive team. Might see a few different faces out there as we begin this second half. Yep, they got the JV playing, the JV team playing the second half. So we'll see where it goes. Maybe Hill Murray can even mount a little bit of a comeback. But as uh, I was talking to some JV players down in the concession stands, they said that this isn't their first time playing and they're very excited to play. Definitely. Get a chance to run around with the big kids. Kind of be a, one of the issues with, you know, I suppose lacrosse gr as a, a growing sport here is that, you know, some programs are maybe a little further along than others. You can kind of see where this modern media uh, program has a little more uh, experience and history than maybe this uh, Pioneers team. Exactly. You got to think it's great to have these young players for the seasons going forward to have this experience. So we'll see how they do today. And, uh, Coach uh, Mooseberger definitely told us if things went according to plan, he was going to try and get some of the younger guys in there, get them some experience, um, you know, and just kind of take that next step towards the future. Yep, very confident in his team and for them to be where the, he pretty much predicted that they would be at where they're at right now. I'm sure he hoped they didn't, Hilmer didn't score a goal, but they did. And I think uh, another one of his big concerns is maybe not letting off the gas a little bit. Now, you don't want to embarrass anybody out here, but, uh, you know, he wants to finish the game strong. He said a couple of their games, they kind of let teams creep back into it that he felt they really shouldn't have. And, uh, you know, just, just finishing it out, playing a complete game, uh, mm -hmm. something that he wanted to focus on. Yeah, great time for him to evaluate the young players as well. There's a penalty on the field. You see the stick getting hit out. Great shot there. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the penalty. Yeah, I think that was a little slashing there. So yeah, penalty did go against Montemino. Be a nice opportunity here for Hill Murray in the early going of the second half. Barley can't handle it. Mott will try and scoop it and do, and they'll head the other way. Might have to learn a few more names here. Yeah, the Matamidi started out with starter Luke Smith in there, and then they took him out. So I believe, yeah, Matamidi also has replaced their goalie. Ian Kegley has come in to replace Evan Stoker, who started the first half. And it looks like he'll, he'll get his ninth victory on the season after seeing out that first half. Yep, uh, Kegley on the year with three shots against and three saves, so his save percentage is 1,000%. That's pretty impressive. Or 100%, maybe. Now, uh, small sample size, so we'll see what happens. But uh, Kegley has actually got into two games. So uh, they had a bit of a blowout against North St. Uh, yeah, North St. Paul earlier this year. I think Kegley got into that one. And uh, he makes another appearance here tonight. And great passing continues into the second half for Montemidi. That one is Connor Stoker. Yeah, you see a great pass from number seven to Connor Stoker, and he just throws it in right there. It makes it look effortless. And dare I say, potential brother of goalkeeper Evan Stoker. As you can see, just a nice pass over the middle. 49 throws it right in. Yeah, kind of looked like uh, Lawless and Schwartz right there. That's right, and that's, that's good news for Modern United. Connor Stoker, number 49, is a freshman. So nice things from the youngster. You take a look at this uh, varsity roster for Montevideo. Whole heck of a lot of seniors, a lot of 12th graders on that. So you, you know, I'm sure they're going to want to see this thing through to the end, bring home a state championship, and kind of end out their high school career mm -hmm. on a very big high. Nothing like being a senior and ending on a state championship. This could be the last time some of these guys play lacrosse. That's right. And that's something I would know nothing about, winning a state championship. <laughs> yeah, girl, coming from Park High School, we were bad at every sport, but girl softball. Oh, I hear you, brother. My high school was no good. My baseball team did pretty good. You know, they had a left-handed pitcher at some point. That was all right. Uh, but never, never made it to the state tournament, I'll tell you that much. You know what's bad when your high school is only known for having shot and name Scott going to it, so from American Pie. Well, that's uh, something I didn't even know. I didn't even know he lived in Minnesota. That's in that's interesting. Yeah, he's from Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Well, how about that? Yeah, 
Hill Murray just seems to have a really tough time to get anything going on offense. Even the JV players for Monomedi are playing some great defense, just getting right in there. I talked about a lot in the first half a lot about how the bottom EI defense condenses down. You also see them expand out and uh, put pressure on uh, anyone who has the ball for Hill Murray. But then when they need to, when you know if Hill Murray gets it a little closer, they they you know they're all they're all kind of in sync. You can tell with the coaching that they all kind of condense and expand as a unit. Whereas Hill Murray is a little you know there's some a little more disorganization there where you know some players might not exactly know where to be. Allows for you know one guy to one guy to sneak in, you know, on attack. You know, just people getting out of position, exactly. And, uh, you know, a lot of the system that Coach uh, Mooseberger was talking about, I think, in play uh, in, in there. And even with, you know, it, potentially JV players, you saw it there, they all were kind of expanded, at, you know, the same width. Yeah, it says a lot when he has a lot of confidence in his younger players. I mean, that's great. So we're still having issues with our clock, but we have eight minutes and counting Ooh, left to go. Big, big collision. Right there. And that's number 49, Connor Stoker, the freshman. I'm sure you felt that one a little yeah, bit. He was laid out there by Kranz, and that was a big hit. Which looked like he was laid out by about three Hill Marie yeah. players. That so, was uh, actually Barley. I'm sorry, not Kranz. Barley's been all over the field for Hill Murray tonight, but still can't get anything going. You talk about younger players getting some experience. That's some good experience for 49 there. Connor Stoker, maybe getting a feel for uh, the physicality of the varsity game a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we've seen Hill Murray in the second quarter. They really came out ready to attack and lay down some hits, and it doesn't look like they're stopping in the second half. So yeah. it's kind of working. They didn't score that many goals in the second quarter. Yeah, I like the, the emphasis on being a little more physical. Just not making, you know, everything looks so easy for Bonamita in that first quarter. Just do something to make it a little less easy for him to put, you know. Exactly. Keep off guard. Another nice stop right there. Yeah, he's a, he has also been a bright spot. Now, the score might not indicate it, but he has been a bright spot for this team. Well, it's tough. The defense hasn't been able to stop uh, Wallace and Schwartz, and he's doing the best he can here. Defense really isn't helping him out too much. But I would I would wager a bet that Ibarra Suggs is approaching uh, double-digit saves here tonight. He's got to be. Nelson from Hill Murray just laid out there by one of the JV players. And what a pass. How did he get that one off? But Suggs again with the stop. You see that somehow 18 gets the pass off. What great concentration. Falling down three guys on him, and he still gets the pass off. I believe that was Michael Lang, 18, getting the pass off. The shot was Nate Grasklowitz. See, they still got some seniors in there. Maybe they're getting the guys who don't play as much in there. And That's right. I think, you know, <coughs> this program progressing, you know, some of these guys that maybe started out as freshmen playing, uh, you know, some good younger players coming up here in Montemina. It seems to be, uh, you know, a good youth program in the community kind of uh, generating things. And uh, you can certainly see at the high school level yeah, even their JV team mixed in a little bit with some seniors who don't play. They still make it look effortless, effortless right now. Let's see what they can continue to do. And that's uh, you know, that's kind of inspiring. <laughs> uh, you know that those players stuck with it, even if it's a 12th grader on JV. I think that speaks to the coaching staff and the team in general that you know they're still willing to put in the work, even though they might not get the playing time. Yeah, this team. You know, they kind of reflect uh, the community around here. They seem really well together. And as we've seen, the hashtag Team Emmy, you know, the city's banding together just like this, the lacrosse team. That's right. We missed uh, the earlier portion of our broadcast. Uh, Montemite Lacrosse is dedicating their season to Emmy Venus, a youngster in the community who was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Uh, but after some lengthy surgery, it is not cancerous, and she is doing fine, healthy. And today was kind of dedicated to her as well. A lot of players wearing blue shirts under their uniforms with the hashtag Team Emmy Day on it. Yep, and the team ded dedicating their whole season to brain cancer research and Emmy. They were taking a picture out of midfield for halftime. Just a great cause. 
That's right. Coach was getting involved. A lot of the players, both on both sides, and in, in fact, uh, before the game, taking a picture. Um, just great. To, yeah, great to see the community, you know, supporting such a good cause. And you know what I mean. She's not even close to high school age. You know, not not related to any of these players on the Monument of the Cross team, but they still, you know, uh, took it upon themselves to kind of support the cause. And uh, you know, a lot of the proceeds from tonight and everything is going to go to support. Uh, brain cancer research and everything like that. So what a wonderful cause. Oh, that's a great cause. So Aaron pass in midfield from the Pioneers. Yep. Hill Murray still doesn't look like they can get Matamidi out of their offensive zone. So. Looks like Hill has brought in a few uh, new faces as well here into the second half. Maybe just trying to see what they got. Well, they do have a break. Penalty flag comes up, but there's a goal. Is that and Visage with the ball right there? You got it. Like yeah. I said, in order to get back in the game, they got to get him the ball. That was a nice two-on-one break they ended up with. As good passing. Number 20 to Visage, right over the middle. Goalie comes out, just throws it right by him. And that pass was right on the money. And it led Vicious, Visage perfectly. And uh, he's a talented player. He's not going to miss from there. That would be his 14th goal on the season. Now, as we see with Stoker out, Kegley comes in getting his feet wet. We didn't see uh, Stoker let much by, and now Kegley. And as you said, Kegley coming into this one 100% save percentage. That is going down now. Now he's at about 750. Now, yeah, I was going to say it was a small sample size. He was three for three. But uh, I don't think he'll take any of the blame on that one. Yeah, Keegley's only a, a, a junior, so next year he'll likely be the starter. Yeah, Stoker being a senior, Keegley getting his feet wet, good for next year. That's got to be something that uh, coach has got to like to see, see what he has, you know, maybe if there's a, a younger player, you know, kind of seeing, looking forward to next year, maybe see what he's got lining up for the years to come. It's always good. Matamidi once again with the pressure down on the Hill Murray defense, just moving the ball. So you can just kind of tell Matamidi moves the ball so effortlessly and it just looks like Hill Murray, just even with the most simple passes, they, they have trouble catching the ball, they have trouble scooping it up. They're just two totally different teams in two totally different directions. Yeah, and I was kind of talking about how, you know, you can kind of notice a difference in experience level, and I think the, you know that kind of leads to it. You see a lot of times I've been noticing on the Hill Murray side that the coaches are kind of you know instructing players as the game's being played of like you know more pressure, things like that. Where on modern media they they already have the understanding. And also uh, Hill Murray only has four seniors on their varsity team. A lot of these guys are in ninth through eleventh grade. A lot of them are tenth. So you know the. The better, the more these guys get to play against the tougher team, the more it might help them later on in the years to come. Might be some growing pains, uh, you know, this season, but the payoff, I'm sure, will be great. As uh, Coach Mooshbruder for Montemita, I said last year was a little bit of a rough start because they had to learn new things. They're a younger team, and now a lot of them are seniors, and they're playing up to their capability. And I, I got to imagine that lacrosse, you know, as it's growing here in Minnesota, will grow at a school like Hill Murray as well, you know, with that great hockey tradition. You got to, you know, you got to anticipate some interest being there. Although I don't see a whole lot of hockey player names on this list, uh, but you, like, like you said, it is a young team. Yeah, I mean, as we know, Hill Murray's great at hockey mostly every year. Yeah, great program, both on uh, the girls and boys side. I'm sure a lot of those guys who play hockey for Hill Murray aren't really playing lacrosse because that they're all year round. They got to be top notch. Hill Murray's kind of expected to be good every year. Yeah, that could even be instruction from coach of the hockey team, and he's a guy you do not want to disappoint. Coach Bill Lechner, of course, at Hill Murray, always brings a great program year in and year out. So just over two minutes left to go here, third quarter, 12 to two, Monomenai leading. Just a little info, it will be a running clock if Monomenai goes up by 12 goals. Right now only up by 10. 
I think that's another good move by uh, Coach Moosebrugger is to get get some of those players he wants to get a little bit of experience before the running clock, you know, kind of get them some real time to play. Yeah, I'm sure he would like them to score and get that running clock, but the more he can evaluate them, the better he can see what their skill sets are, and things of that nature. And you better believe he's still doing it. You know, I mean, he's still on the edge of the line. Guys he's still coaching. Crossed. Job never uh, never stops. He just seems like a guy that wants to win. We're listening to him pregame, this guy loves his players. He's confident in his team. He just knows he has a great team here, and they're capable of winning the state championship, and he knows he has one of the best players in uh, Schwartz. About a minute five remaining here in the third quarter. Yeah, and if, if you uh, missed us mention earlier in the broadcast too, quite the resume that Coach Moose Brugger comes into this Modern United program with. Uh, he took over last year, but before that he was at uh, the University of St. Thomas for over 10 years, I believe he said, including four, four national titles. Uh, so that is quite the resume to bring to the high school level, you know, almost going down a rung. But uh, you can see why he maybe wanted to take a look and uh, take over this Modern Mi program. It's yeah. looking like one of the strongest in the state. Yeah, yeah, they look like a great team, and I'm sure he had a lot of confidence in his teams at St. Thomas, and the confidence from him, I'm sure, reflects on his players, and the more confident they are, the better they're going to be, and we can see that just on the field. And I feel like every every sport I hear about from, Saint Tom, from the University of St. Thomas is one, either winning a national title or won a national title recently. Yeah, they always have a good football team. Did they uh, go to the uh, NCAA finals or something for football? Football, yeah. They've, they've been, the uh, past couple years, they've really been, uh, they've kind of been rivaling St. John's as that local powerhouse. Um, and I think they've almost, they've kind of leapfrogged them uh, now. Yeah, St. John's, uh, Gagley already retired, and they can't, kind of haven't been at the same spot that they once were. That's tough guy to replace, yeah. as I understand. He coached for many years. I know St. Thomas has also brought, uh, within the last 10 years, brought home a national baseball title. Uh, their, their basketball team at points has been involved in the Nationals. Well, that'll do it for our third quarter. Score is still 12-2, to Montemini leading. Hill Murray did get on the board there. Actually, uh, this third quarter was tied 1-1. But we will break as the score will be 12 to 2. We're going to break for the end of the third quarter. We will have that fourth and final quarter for you when we return. Don't go anywhere. Community media, from my point of view, is um, organic. It's power. Public access, to me, uh, gives me an opportunity to get my word out to the uh, larger community of the town that I can't get to on my own. This is good programming. This is what people say, well, how come they don't ever write anything good in the news, right? This is the good news. What we're doing is critical, it's important. We have to stay energized and motivated to do this work in our community, but understand that our real mission is to hold up our part as we encourage others to hold up their part around the planet. Welcome back. We're here for the start of the fourth quarter. You see the score, 12 to two, Montemidi leading it. And we are ready to get the opening draw for this fourth and final quarter underway. It's a 12 minute quarter. Sorry again for our clock difficulties here tonight. But I will let you know when you need to know how much time is left to go. The loose ball out in front, scooped up by the Montemini keeper, and they'll go the other way. Yep, Montemini continues to put that pressure on Hill Murray, as they've done all game. Ball in the corner. And cycle back up top, as Montemini makes substitution. Now behind the net. Uh, 
on a wing. They'll set it back up towards the top. And shot low, and it'll go out. Matamidi will be closest to it. You got a bit of a change here as Phil Murray's brought in a new goalie. And not sure who that is quite yet. That's always the thing with these high score rosters, never get them 100%. What a nice job uh, replacing Ibarra Suggs, who did a great job in net for Hill Murray. As I said, the score might not reflect that, but he at least 10 saves on the night, a couple from point blank range. So very good job uh, by number one. In yeah, him goal. playing so well, might have stopped the running clock. So we'll see how they do with the backup goalie in there. And Barrow Suggs is also a senior, so this is a good time for Hill Murray to get some of their backups in. The coach for Hill Murray can watch to see how these backups are doing, guys that are younger. And as you can see, they took out their leading scorer, Visich, so. Trying to work on a few things, I'm sure. Rohr, he has a goal in the game, number 20, still in there for Matamidi. Yeah, I think Rohr had a couple goals early on in the first quarter. He had a real nice assist, I remember, in the first half. Now it goes back out. That is 45, Hunter Ing Ingebrigtsen. Yeah, Ingebrigtsen's kind of been to start off this fourth quarter. He's been all, all over the field. He's playing great. You can see the hustle out of him. Sam Dono was trying to make a run in towards net, pulls it back out, pass around, and that is a goal. Nate Grashowitz, great hard goal there, pass to Hill Murray. The Hill Murray goalie didn't even look like he saw him shoot the ball. The ball just went right past him without even flinching. Yeah, that was tough to tell. I, I thought it maybe hit the side of the net, the outside, but that one goes in as the ref signals it's good. We'll take a look here. Not sure, it was, oh yeah, Grashowitz. Gets it, yeah. And you can see by the time the Hill Murray goalie saw it, it was already at his Didn't leg. Didn't know too much about it. It looks like it maybe even deflected off of him and went in. So 13 to two. So we'll have a draw. Glasowicz, uh, ninth grader. So he's getting some valuable playing time right now. So that's two ninth graders, the only goal scorers here for the Zephyrs in the second half. Uh, first one coming from Connor Stoker. As you can see, this team is just deep from seniors down to uh, freshmen, so they have a very promising future. Moroni playing some tough defense right there for Matamidi. Hillbury with it now, working it around. Fumbled and Matamidi picks it up. We'll change directions. Huge hit there by Meyer against the guy Matamidi. Oh, what a move! Number 18, Michael Lang. He just took that one all the way down the field himself, and he said, "Hey, this is my ball, and it's going in the net." Right, Goal determined. There he is, just going through multiple Hill Murray defenders and just throws it in right to the left-hand side of the goalie in the bottom part of the net there. Great goal by Lang. I notice Ibarra Suggs put his helmet back on. Not sure if they have any intention of bringing him back into this one. Should be a running clock at 12 minutes, or at 12 goals, so we'll see if they run it here. Monomia leading 14 to two, 8.30 left to go in the game. And there's a push from behind, it's like no penalty. Connor Barley for Hill Murray, he's been all over the field today. He seems like a great player, great hustler. 
That's what you always like to see out of your players. Great hustle. They do have a couple nice players. Barley, Visage. Um, Seifert, Andrew Seifert, number seven. He had a very impressive goal, the first one for Hill Murray. Yeah, as you see, Matamidi played great defense on Visage today. They didn't really let him get anything going in the first half, and the score reflects. Some physicality, number 41, Ben Putney kept the ball somehow, didn't get a shot off. They'll work it around. And right in front of that, Stoker, but what a save! What a save, caught it in the net. Yeah, it's kind of going right at his gut. He stuck his stick out there and he blocked it. Great save, that was a hard throw. But now seven minutes and counting left to go here in the game as well as with Team Emmy Day here at Matamidi. Just swarming defense right there by Matamidi. Hill Murray guy coming right over the middle and four guys just swarmed right onto him, forcing the ball out of his stick. You see Hill Murray's got Visage back in there, so maybe they score a couple more goals before the end of time. Matamidi racing up the field. Good passing. And another great save. Yeah, Matamidi caught Hill Murray when they were substituting. And what a great goal there by a goal. He pretty much had to play defense by himself. Past two saves, not only has he made the save, but he just caught the ball. That is no easy task. Yeah, you got a borrow, and now you have the backup goalie just making great saves. You wonder if they had a little bit more defense, how close this game could have been. Or is Schwartz and Lawless just that good? The uh, backup looked a little shaky there when he first came in, allowing a couple of goals. But uh, since then, he's really clamped down, looking nice. Yeah, a couple shots. The pipes. Get the nerves out. And there he goes There's again. another nice goal. Or stop. Yeah, let's see if Hill Murray can turn this into a little bit of offense. These haven't been soft shots in the backup goal against Hill Murray. Like, this guy's stopping everything that's coming at him right now. He looks ready. Let's just hope I didn't jinx him. I was gonna say, they might get another test here uh, with Matamidi coming into the Hillbury zone once again. Zephyr's working around, maybe trying to run it in close. Yeah, Grasowicz trying to get another goal here. Some good D from the Pioneers. Some clock here, playing a little conservative for Montemini, maybe trying to lull the defense to sleep. Now here's Grasowicz, another goal that takes a two for the night. Now does that mean he jinx the goalie then? Uh, I'd say enough time had passed, no jinx there. I said Grasowicz was looking to score again. I, mean, I think it was more on him than on the on the on just you jinxing game. the goalie. Nice shot. But it kind of looked like the Hill Murray players just kind of sat around. They kind of let them shoot it. Well, that's what I was wondering. I thought they were maybe kind of just buying some time, buying clock. But then I slowly realized Montevideo was kind of lulling them to they sleep a little bit. Sleep, yeah. yeah, That's a big part of lacrosse is kind of, you know, playing that game a little bit. Yeah, you got to wonder if these younger guys for Hill Murray just got lulled to sleep and they were like, who's got the ball? Next thing you know, it's in the net. It's kind of a cat and mouse game, you know. Sometimes you go real aggressive, you take it yourself, or sometimes you pull it back and just kind of slowly pass it. And uh, mixing it up that way uh, gets difficult on any defense. Barley with another face-off win. Yeah, Hill is actually uh, one of the uh, majority of these face-offs. Yeah, Barley coming into the game according to Minnesota Lacrosse Hub and won 61 faceoff wins out of his 100 attempts. But that is nowhere near how good Matamidi's faceoff guy is. Lucas Holmbreak, according to Lacrosse Hub, has won 63 faceoffs out of 85 attempts. That's a pretty good percentage. But as you said, it looked like uh, Hill Murray guy came out and ready to, ready to play. 
That's right. We're going to have to win some face-offs. I mean, <clears throat> I'd imagine that the Matamita, you know, being 8-0, they were going to be winning a lot of face-offs, right? But uh, nice job. You know, Varley, he was one of those players that we kind of talked about on Hill Murray. Varley, Visage, uh, they got a couple nice, nice pieces. All right, TV19 sports fans, we want to remind you, of course, about Sports Path, and that is live on location, TV19, every other Wednesday at 7 p.m. You know, we have highlights, we do interviews, we got more, we got prize giveaways. It's a great little show to catch up with uh, all things sports here in the East Metro. So I want you to tune in every other Wednesday live at 7. It does get replayed uh, if you don't can't catch it live, and we do post links to past episodes through our Facebook. So uh, look out for Sports Path. We'll have highlights of this game as well as uh, the others we've broadcasted here recently on an upcoming episode. And we hope you tune in. And that's led by you, right? That is, in fact, hosted by yours truly, Sam Erickson. He does a great job. Check oh, him thank out. you. Thank you. I do what I can. It's a good shot at some of the, you see the blue T-shirts there from Montemini. That is in support, of course, for Team Emmy Day. And that is supporting Emmy Venus, a youngster in the community that was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Everything's all good. She had uh, some surgeries, but is doing fine now. Um, cancer free, uh, but they're kind of doing the hashtag Team Emmy thing all season long uh, to you know, do support and uh, raise uh, funding for research for brain cancer and all that. Uh, so great cause. And there's a goal by Visage. Well, what a great day for Montemita to come out and rally around uh, Emmy and just blow out Hill Murray. Definitely good to have everyone involved and uh, yeah, support the cause as well as the team. See a nice pass there to Vichich and he just guns it in. Goalie really couldn't find the ball and just kind of slides in. Now Begley almost keeping his uh, save record intact. Unfortunately, that one trickles by him. Excuse me, Kegley, Ian Kegley, number 50 for Montemi Yeah, let's just say his save percentage isn't at 1,000% anymore, as we were talking about earlier. That's Maybe right. it's at 500 now. Yeah. Yep, and it is the running clock now that uh, Hill Murray is down by 12. So. Running clock back. About two and a half minutes left in the game. 15 to three, Montemi has been in charge the whole way. You know, imagine Montemita is just going to continue to pass it back and forth. Wasting the clock. <laughs> and like you said, Montemita just working it around a little bit. Might try and get a shot off here soon. Just playing a little pitch and catch. Ball will go the other way. That was a little bit of an offsides there. You had five guys on that side of the field. Coaches don't seem too happy about that one. Yeah, it's kind of a lapse and uh, mental lapse there towards the end of the game. What's going to happen with the younger guys, though? They're new. Maybe trying to make a little, a lot of things happen and just weren't paying attention. Visage with a nice grab right there. You can see why he's the best player on Hill Murray, and they always continue to give the ball to him. He got hard shots. Just early on in the game, they didn't feed him the ball enough, and when they did, Matamina was just all over him. I was going to say, maybe there's a reason he couldn't get fed uh, with that good Zephyr defense. You see him there with a great pass. Uh, unfortunately, his teammate unable to corral it in. Yeah, I've been very impressed with Visage. No surprise that he is the leading scorer. And, uh, you know, his dad being the coach, Probably has to have some uh, lacrosse chops a little bit, know the game a little bit. Yeah, it's good. He's only a junior, too. Could he come back next year? It's always nice to have your leading point scorer come back and maybe lead them to a few more wins. 45 seconds and counting, of course, with the 12-goal lead. It is a running clock, and this one is all but over. So we'll count out this last uh, half minute or so. We do have a stoppage. So the clock will stop. Looks like we'll have a timeout. Yeah, Hill Murray kind of throwing in some younger players there. Well, it looks like the weather held off for us. Thought we might get rained on there. It's looking a little ominous when we pulled up to the stadium here tonight. Wind has been blowing steadily east, uh, but so far we stayed dry and uh, no storms in the area. It's been a great night for lacrosse. Yeah. TV19 sports fans will remind you of some other programming on TV19. 
And that, of course, is your Business Matters. Uh, and that is every month, Tom Snell and the White Bear Lake Chamber of Commerce bring in a guest who is either a business owner in White Bear Lake or has some connection to White Bear. This 20-minute show provides good insight into what issues are affecting many local business owners. Your Business Matters airs every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Friday at 9.30. That's Your Business Matters only on Channel 19. Yeah, as we were talking about, the weather has played out great. It's just a little chilly. Like, what a great night for lacrosse. There's like football in the fall. It gets a little chilly. It's you a know, great it's, time to watch. It stays light a little bit later, so you kind of get to see the sun go down. The lights come up. I always enjoy yeah, that. It's still bright out. It's a great night. Yeah. It's a nice time to sit by a fire, if you ask me. That's right. Might have to. I'm getting a little chilly. Might have to do that once this thing concludes. As we see, Hill, Mur Hill Murray's rolling out some younger players down there. Some very young players out there for Hill Murray. That's right. As they're trying to start this program or grow this program a little bit. They got to start from the ground up. Might have to rely on some younger players. Montemedi coach mentioned they had about 60 some kids come out, and I don't think that's uh, you know a common thing through all programs throughout the state. As that's a a great number. Uh, for lacrosse. Well, Ozzie, the better program you have, the more people want to come out and win championships. So we'll see if they can do that this year. Something tells me, uh, you know, folks got wind of uh, Coach Moosebrugger being four-time national champ, uh, former St. Thomas coach, and said, you know what? This might be a, a program and a sport we want to get involved in. I know I would have played yeah. with him. It was great to talk to Coach before the game. Very confident in his team, as we said earlier. He just... Had nothing but rave reviews in it. Hear him say one bad thing, but besides the fact that sometimes they kind of let their opponent seat back in. But other than that, he just knows his team is the best in the state, or what he believes. I was going to say, so far this year, probably doesn't have a whole lot to complain about. We'll see if they can get the number one ranking from Adina next week with this, with this blowout. And that will conclude things. Final score is 15 to 3. Matamidi wins it easily, improving to 9 and 0 overall on the season, 4 and 0. Alone atop the Metro East Conference should be a dandy when they get together with Tartan later this month. I want to thank you uh, from all of us here at TV19 Sports for watching. I'm Sam Erickson alongside my partner, John Miller, and we wish you all a good night. Look at you, you're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. All right, hey, I am here with a couple of victorious Matamidi Zephyrs after the big win against Hill Murray. Uh, nice win today, guys. Excellent job. Uh, and so far, it's been a great season. Uh, can you speak a little bit about uh, some of the reasons you've had success so far this year? Well, I think, uh, first off, it, it comes down to we're, we're a really tight-knit group. So, uh, you know, oftentimes at practice, you'll hear a lot of laughter, you know, in between drills and whatnot. So... I would attribute our success mostly to just team chemistry. You know, we all we all know each other so well. We've been playing together forever. So it's you know it's a it's a special group, I'd say. You know, uh, we talked to your coach a little bit before the game, and he he mentioned that you know you guys have a good group, and you you all came in uh, wanting to focus and you work really hard in the off season. Um, could you maybe tell us a little bit about uh, what it's like playing for coach? Uh, playing for coach is great. I mean, he he knows this stuff. He's been doing this stuff for years. He always says how he can do this stuff in his sleep to us. Kind of. Grazes us a little bit about that, but he's a great guy. I mean, he knows all of us so well. He really takes the time to get to know all of us and bring us together as a whole. And like I said, he knows what he's doing. He brings us together. Definitely. You know, we could uh, we could totally see the passion uh, that he had and, you know, the, the care that he had for you guys when we talked to him. Uh, and, you know, we heard his resume. That was pretty impressive as well. Now, uh, today um, and all season is kind of a special uh, thing for this team. Um, you're dedicating to Emmy Venus, um, a youngster who kind of went through some tough times. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, uh, both, uh, you know, kind of the hashtag Team Emmy and then uh, today uh, in uh, particular? 
Um, we just thought that there's a girl, there's a girl in need out there who's going through a lot of troubles. We just wanted to give back to her, give back to the community, and show that we um, help others. And stuff. Nice. And do you guys have anything uh, else planned throughout the year um, to do in terms of the Team Emmy thing? Uh, well, earlier this year, us as captains, we went over to their house, we talked to them, we brought gifts, and tonight was one of our big nights, bringing them out here for the team and just showing the love for her, and just trying to uh, help her out of the community. Heck yeah, to show the love. It's a great cause. I mean, especially, now I know, I don't believe she's related to anyone on the, on the team, obviously not of high school age. Um, is there any reason in particular that you chose this um, cause, or is it just kind of something that you wanted to do, you wanted to have a cause, and there was, you know, a young girl in the community that could use it? Well, uh, Coach Moose actually knows uh, Emmy's father, so that's kind of how he came to us captains at, you know, as a, early in the season, he's like, listen, I know this guy really well, I've been coaching hockey with him for a couple years, and he's like, you know, this is a great story, this is a great thing for us to do as a team, and we, you know, immediately, it didn't, didn't take us anything, we, you know, we, we wanted to do it right away, so. Well, it's an awesome act by an awesome team. Uh, great job tonight, guys, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thank you. You're watching TV 19 Sports.